Hi, welcome to a, a lesson on, on differentiation in stem cells. So last lesson, last time we were, we were reviewing National 5 and we were talking about specialised cells and what they were. Um, but how do cells become specialised is really what we're looking at today. Um, we said that the body is made up of about 200 different types of cell, but you started off as a single cell, as a zygote. So how did you end up looking the way you do now? So the, the key points that we want you to take away from this lesson, really, by, by the end of this lesson, we want you to be able to explain uh, this process of differentiation. Tell us what differentiation is, um, but also tell us how it happens and how, how the process actually happens and state the importance of, of differentiation. So again, going back to National 5, uh, and you'll recognize this as mitosis, and last time, we were talking about the different stages of mitosis and what's happening at the different stages. But basically, all you need to know for this lesson is the end result of mitosis. So at the start of mitosis, in the top left, you've got the mother cell, which has, in a human, 46 chromosomes, uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes, homologous chromosomes. And at the end of mitosis, after the process has taken place, you end up with two daughter cells, uh, each with 46 chromosomes and 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. So the, the DNA in the daughter cells is identical to the DNA that was in the mother cell originally. And that's an important point to keep in mind uh, as we go through this lesson. So what is differentiation then? Well, it's the process of an unspecialized cell or a, a stem cell becoming, changing into a specialized cell of some type. So the, the process of the cell becoming specialized is called differentiation. So pause for a second and just think, how does a cell become specialized? How does it become different to the, the original uh, stem cell. Well, this is a quite a common misconception. Some people think that the actual order of the bases or the genetic code changes as the cell becomes specialized. Now, that is just not true. The DNA is the same, as we said in, at the, right at the start from mitosis, the DNA in pretty much every single cell in your body and the order of the bases that makes up that DNA is identical, it's the same. So if that's the case, if cells all contain exactly the same genetic information with the bases in the same order, how does differentiation take place? How do you turn an unspecialized cell, a stem cell, into a specialized cell? So if you take a look at the um, stem cell at the top of the, the screen. So what we're seeing here is that in this stem cell, an unspecialized cell, we're pretending that there are eight genes uh, in the cell. And each gene is made up of a particular code of bases. So if you look at gene number one, the bases, the order of the bases is ATGCC adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, cytosine. And then for gene two, the order of the bases is A, T, T, C, G. So how would the order of the bases be different in a specialized cell? No, they wouldn't. They'd be exactly the same. The order of the bases in a stem cell is exactly the same to the order of the bases within a specialized cell. So that leads to the question really, what causes a cell then to become specialized? How is a cell that is specialized different genetically to a cell that's unspecialized, a, a stem cell? If you take a look at the diagram, again at the top we've got our stem cell, our unspecialized cell. And it's got its eight genes. And at the bottom, we've got our specialized cell, still got its eight genes. But three 
of the eight genes are switched off. So you can see that gene number two, gene number five and gene number eight in the specialized cell are switched off. Now the fact that those genes are switched off, that genetic information uh, is switched off within that cell, that is what makes the cell specialized. So we said, haven't we, that there are about 200 different types of specialized cell in the body. So what makes one specialized cell different to another specialized cell? Well, just take a look at the, the pictures and see if you can work it out for yourself. Notice at the top, we've got a nerve cell, a specialized cell. And at the bottom, we've got a liver cell, again, a specialized cell. Now at the top, the combination of the genes that are switched off is different to the combination of genes that are switched off in the liver cell. So in the nerve cell, genes two, three, five, and eight are switched off. But in the liver cell, uh, genes two, four, and seven are switched off. So the genes that are switched off is what makes the cell different or unique, if you like. So if a, if a cell has genes switched off, what does that mean for that particular cell? How would that affect the cell uh, um, and how the cell functions? And try and link this to National 5 biology. So DNA, genes, if you like, they code for particular proteins. So DNA, mRNA, protein, the link from National 5. So if a particular gene is switched off, well, that information isn't available to make a particular protein within that cell. So have you got the, the main points from the lesson? Well, pause the video, have a go at these five questions. Um, and if you can do these, great, fantastic. If not, have a look through your notes or ask your teacher for some help because these are the key questions that we really need you to get uh, from this lesson. So we know that stem cells are around specialized cells. We know there are different types of stem cells, but what makes an adult stem cell or a tissue stem cell different to an embryonic stem cell? Genetically, what's different about them? And how can stem cells be used um, for research? Uh, and how can they be used therapeutically? Well, we'll find out next lesson.